you are going to create your applications in Java using the core libraries that we just mentioned. You will run your applications with the Dalvik virtual machine. I mentioned the Dalvik VM in the previous video, but this one will allow me to dig a bit deeper into Dalvik. First of all, what's with the name? Well, Dalvik was written by Dan Bornstein, and uh, he named it after Dalvik Iceland, which apparently is uh, somewhere where his ancestors once lived. So I have over here, uh, this is Dan, apparently, I, I think. This is a, a, the, the sign in front of the city, I guess. Um, Dalvik Iceland, it's kind of on the northern tip of Iceland itself. Anyhow, uh, Dan Bornstein, he's the one that developed the Dalvik VM, came up with this name. Uh, he's a former employee of Google. So as I mentioned in the previous video, whenever you run an app in Android, it runs in its own VM. This means that you'll have many VMs running on your device at any one time. So multiple instances need to be able to run simultaneously. So this, along with the fact that the devices have limited memory and CPU, as well as the battery for a power source, meant that uh, Google had to come up with a VM that was more efficient than the one that comes with the Java SDK. So rather than reading class files, Dalvik reads dex files, D-E-X, Dalvik's Dalvik executable files. Android, the SDK, gives us a, a build time tool called DX. And its job is to convert Java class files into these optimized DEX files. So what kind of optimizations are we talking about here? Well, one of the main optimizations is that DEX files eliminate duplication that's present in class files. Uh, for example, instead of having separate constant pools for each class file, they're going to be collapsed down into one constant pool. If you're interested in more details, uh, about the Dalvik VM and the internals of it. All you have to do is go out and Google Dalvik and Dan Bornstein. And one of the links that'll come up is a YouTube presentation uh, that Dan did back, it's been a little bit, and Google uh, IO 2008, right, as, uh, as Android was, was coming out. And so if you wanted to watch this video, he goes into some really good details as to what was going on behind the scenes. All right, let's see. Go back over to the, the presentation here. Oh, another thing worth noting is that we have a just-in-time compiler that was added into Android as of the Froyo release, which was uh, version 2.2. Uh, just-in-time compilers, they speed up uh, interpreted applications even more because instead of running interpreted bytecode, it actually compiles that down into machine code. And usually what happens here is that it optimizes as it goes even further. So I just mentioned that every app runs in its own VM. To be more clear, every application runs in its own Linux process. And it also gets its own user ID. So for every file that it writes out, that's going to belong only to it. And every application is only going to have direct access to its own data. So the result is that each application has a nice sandbox to play in. So if it misbehaves, it won't affect other applications. Each app is isolated from, from other apps. Another security feature worth mentioning is that uh, every application has to declare within an XML file, we'll call it the manifest file, it, it declares using these uses permissions entries. Uh, it says what permissions it requires in order to run. So for example, an application might want to be able to access the, the network, maybe so it can update its data from some online source. Well, upon installation, the user is asked if they wish to continue the installation given that permission request. So when you install an app on the Google Play Store, if you don't like the permissions that that ask, app is asking for, you don't need to install it. You just say, never mind, I don't, I don't want that after all. 
it doesn't bug you every time you run the app and say, hey, can you, are you allowed to do these permissions? It's one time only at installation. 